Hey guys, it's Special Aussie here, and welcome to episode 23 of my New York City Wrestling series for TEW 2016. So this is Halloween in Harlem. Uh, we got a, a decent show, not too great. Uh, I did make a few further cuts to the roster. Um, a couple of people, I'm not too sure actually how many of those I did off camera. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got a bit of a smaller roster now. Hopefully the finances start to improve a little bit. Or at least we stop losing 10,000 and maybe lose half of that would be nice. Because um, I think we can... We can suffer 5,000 a month for a little while, at least until we get maybe D-plus popularity, which hopefully will be quite soon. Okay, so yeah, let's get into the show. Uh, Ernest Youngman does not have a match tonight, uh, but he is involved in a few angles. Um, and tonight's main event is an angle. Um, it's going to be the first time I actually try out an angle as the main event of the actual show. Uh, and as you can see, that's an 8-minute angle as well. So we'll see how that affects the overall grade rating and uh, what that angle actually gets itself. So yeah, let's get into the opening angle, which is of course the typical uh, highlights package. Um, highlights graphics of all the matches we're going we're gonna to see tonight. And uh, yeah, good stuff. 95 A star with Ernest Youngman. Um, does anyone get any worker improvements? Storm Spillane improves in acting, so that's pretty good as well. Ah uh, yes. We are going to change Dean's gimmick. Okay, switch to a blue collar. The gimmick has got an initial rating of below average, which is not great, but that's okay. Hopefully that doesn't affect things too much. Uh, we're going to the next segment, which is the opening match. 72 B minus, good stuff, I like it. It's got Bret Heartbreak in it, so very happy to see a B minus. In a decent match, El Medico Jr. and Steve Flash defeated Bret Heartbreak and Logan Wolfsbane in 959 when El Medico Jr. defeated Bret Heartbreak by pinfall with a Northern Light Suplex. In terms of in-ring work, El Medico was head and shoulders above everybody else. And uh, we of course kind of expect that all the time. Uh, but yeah, Bret was off his game and Logan was also off his game, so yeah, interesting. It's a pretty good match though, to be fair. All probably El Medico. Uh, actually, Logan kind of pulled his weight as well. Um, the great performance of El Medico really stood out with an 84 in ring performance. 66 for Logan, so good stuff. No worker improvements, which is a little bit disappointing, but all good. Wow. El Medico then cuts a promo with uh, Marsh Stranger, basically discussing um, how he respects, he respects Marsh Stranger's mask um, and what he stands for being a, you know, a good guy similar to himself, um, and then they talk about uh, the recent troubles they've both had with Savage Tiger Jr. and El Serpiente, and that gets an 89A. That's a, okay, an awesome. Marsh Stranger developing be uh, better performance skills as well, so that's also really good. 89A. Uh, we then go into his match, which is, a, again, a pretty decent match, 66C+. In a decent match, Marsh Stranger defeated Seth Whitehead in 941 by submission with a Cobra Clutch. Seth Whitehead, once again, doing quite well. Um, Marsh Stranger was actually off his game as well in this match. Uh, he only got a 64 in-ring performance, and uh, Seth pulling a 53. Um, quite impressed with uh, Seth Whitehead. He's still only very young as well, I think 22 or 23 years old. And his, uh, his psych's improving quite a bit as well. Okay, another pretty decent match. It, uh, 67C plus is pretty good for Chevy Ferreira. In about that had good heat and decent wrestling, Savage Tiger Jr. defeated Chevy Ferreira in 10 minutes 24 seconds by pinfall with a salvage duplex. Savage Tiger Jr. makes defense number 6 of his NYCW Tri-State Regional title. And he gets an in-ring performance of 65, Chevy with a 47. Again, it's pretty decent rating. Uh, we then have the cooldown match, which is pretty bad, 38D minus, in a bout that had a decent reaction from the crowd but subpar wrestling. Tennessee William defeated Rick Sanders in 1024 by pinfall with a Devil's Crossroad. Um, yeah, did its job. Um, Tennessee a little bit disappointing there with a 32 in ring performance, no work improvements either. We then have Ross Henry come out and cut a menace promo 
um, for his upcoming match with El Serpiente. Gets a 93A. And the match itself gets a 73B minus. Good stuff. Once again, we get the uh, the match suffering because of uh, Ross Henry's selling ability. And about that had fantastic heat and great wrestling. Ross Henry defeated El Serpiente in 9.58 by pinfall with an earthquake power slam. El Serpiente with an in-ring performance of 60. For a lower mid-carder, that's pretty good, but, I mean, you look at his stats and you can understand um, he is actually really, really good. And yeah, Ross with a 77 in-ring, and uh, he's also improving in performance skills. Um, hopefully that's predominantly psych. Is psychology okay? I should have made this the main event. 85 B plus. I think that's our new highest rating. I think 83 was the the previous, and I'm pretty sure these all four of these guys were actually involved in it. But this is a number one contenders match, and uh, yeah, we've kind of got the ring generals against the American Cobras. But of course, it is uh, every man for himself. Um, to try and become the number one contender for the Empire title. In an exceptional match, Dean Waldorf defeated Marvel Malloy, Marv Statler, and Storm Spillane in 2953 when Dean Waldorf uh, defeated Marvel Malloy by pinfall with a Waldorf salad toss. And uh, Storm Spillane carried the match in terms of in ring performance. <laughs> Marvel Malloy sustained bruised buttocks. So he bruised his ass. That's, that's actually a little bit funny. Is that. That, I'm guessing that's probably a legit injury, like, I mean, he'll probably be able to work through it, but still, it's a pretty, you know, random, funny one. And of course, it advances the storyline, which is awesome, because it's such a good rating, 85 B+, plus. that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, Dean with a 73, who had the same as Marv, Marvel Malloy, the lowest with a 68, and then you've got Storm, who had an 85. And uh, worker improvements for Marvel Malloy. He's improving in performance skills. Okay, so that wasn't that's the the main event match, but it's not considered the main event on the card. Uh, this next angle is okay. They got a 100 A star. Um, so Ernest cuts a promo on D Wa Dean Waldorf. If I can get my words out. Um, so yeah, that will be for next week, which will uh, not next week, next month. Uh, in November, which will be New York Nightmare. So let's get that booked in. Just a regular one-on-one -on -one match. And it will be Dean Waldorf taking on Ernest Youngman for the Empire title. Good stuff. Okay. Worker improvements? No. Alright, let's see what the show gets. Okay! So, having the angle at the end of the show, when you can pull a 100A star, does good things for your overall rating. I mean, to be fair, I mean, having an 85B plus match on the card is probably going to help that as well. But a 78B for our overall show rating, that is awesome. I cannot believe. Like, I don't know, the progress recently has just been so incredible. I think our last two shows were both, like, B minuses. I think 76 and then 73 for last episode, and now we've gotten a 78B, just a straight up B. That's awesome. So awesome. Okay, so I think we've got to go Dean, uh, Marv, not Marvel, and yeah, Storm. I mean, all four, all three of these guys, I mean, all four, four guys in that match kind of deserve it, uh, but obviously Marvel being the lowest out of all three, he can uh, miss out here today. Although I should have done him, actually, because he took the pinfall. And I'm pretty sure he was a little bit upset about it. He was unhappy. So that's a little bit of a worry, but, ah, who cares. I'll give him a win next month, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, we, I mean, I don't... I like having a big roster. I didn't like cutting all those guys. Um, but it just makes sense financially. Okay, so there we go. Marvel Malloy's sustained Bruce buttocks at last night's NYCW show. Let's have a look at him, actually. Let's have a look if that injury is actually going to keep him out. Uh, physical. Okay, so he's currently working through it. Um, 
That's okay. <laughs> oh, that is pretty funny. But anyway, good stuff. Let's have a look at Dean. So, of course, he did pick up the win in that match. 63C, that's okay. It's up six points, so that's decent. I mean, everyone in that match really should have probably gone up. Let's have a look at Marv. 61C. So he's up five points as well. Uh, what about Marvel? He took the loss, so maybe he went down a little bit. I think he did. No, he went up three points. Okay. Cool. And we'll check... Uh, where is he? Storm. Good old Storm. I'm a big fan of his. He's a B-. 72 B-, minus, which is up five points as well with that loss. So, happy days, happy days. Anyone else? I would like to look at Bret Heartbreak, please. 20. Okay, it's up three points from his B- minus match. Not too bad. What about El Mitico? 69. I think that's... Yeah, that's up four points as well. Wow. Although he did have that decent promo. It was like an 89 with uh, Marsh Stranger. Let's have Marsh Stranger. We can have a little look at his popularity as well. 54C minus. That's definitely up. Four points. Awesome. Okay. Well... Yeah, I don't really think there's much else to really go over. Um, oh, I forgot to uh, I forgot to do that. Setting his lifespan and freshing it up. What does that mean? Still poor. Oh, oh, okay, right. Okay, I think I just worked something out. So I guess if you tweak the gimmick, when it says it's starting to become stale, it uh, just kind of changes it and freshens it up again. Oh yeah, but look at that guys. 36 D- minus importance and 37 popularity in the tri-state region. We're getting places, we're getting places very slowly, but yeah, progress is being made. Uh, 40 prestige as well, 60 momentum, awesome stuff. Uh, Storm Spillane's not there. Um, with morale issues as well, which is just awesome to see. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, there was other, one other thing. Storm actually got picked up by Pride Glory with a touring contract. So I've had to change uh, the schedule a little bit. Um, pretty much just changed some of these events, the upcoming ones, to uh, week three of the month instead of week two. Um, because he's booked out in week one and two of every month on the Saturday, and I think the Thursday and the Friday as well. So yeah. Yeah, that's going to wrap this episode up, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Thanks for all the support in the series so far. Drop a like on this one as well. I'd very much appreciate that. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already, or if you're a new viewer. And uh, that should keep you up to date with all these episodes coming in your sub box. So yeah, goodbye, guys.